Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about dry fire practice. So, what is dry fire? First, dry fire is the process of actually using no ammunition whatsoever. So there's no ammunition in the firearm, in the magazines, or even in the training area. And the purpose behind dry fire is to help us become more acquainted with the operation and the function of our firearm, as well as the firing sequence, which is using the sights and moving the trigger. Of course, without any ammunition, there's no recoil, so it pretty much ends as soon as you pull the trigger, but there is still a tremendous amount of value. So when we talk about dry fire, there are some very important things that we need to make sure that we, pro we, that we make happen every time that we're going to dry fire practice. The first is we want to identify our training area. Where do I want to do this dry fire practice? Preferably you want to do it in an area where you can kind of shut yourself off from the world. Inside of another room, maybe out in the garage, someplace where you literally have a boundary where somebody has to come through the boundary in order to get to you. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we can identify a safe direction. And how do we identify or what is a safe direction? First, Safe direction is defined as an area or location where should you fire around would cause minimal property damage and no injury or loss of life. So as you're looking through your home, where might be an area that you could use as a safe direction? Well, maybe into a brick wall, maybe into an external wall, maybe into something such as a dry fire practice tool, which will uh, absorb the round should something like that happen. So always make sure that you have identified your safe direction. Next, we want to adhere to the safety rules, the firearm safety rules, anytime we're handling firearms, and this is no different. Uh, in this case, we want to make sure that we double check that the firearm is unloaded, that we double check that our magazines are not loaded with any live ammunition, and that we double check that there's no live ammunition in the training area. After this, we talk about duration and frequency. So how often should I do dry fire? Well, that's a personal preference. I recommend that you at least try to dry fire maybe once or twice a month. If you get more, that's awesome. But because this can be sometimes a logistical challenge, if, if we can get one or two times a month, that's gonna be super valuable. Of course, the frequency can also have a positive effect on our performance. So if I were to do it more than that, that's gonna help me. One of the other things that I tell people is valuable is that after you've completed a training class, I recommend that you try to dry fire as often as possible immediately after that training class because it's gonna help really sink all that information into your subconscious. The next thing we talk about is the duration. How long should I dry fire? My recommendation is about 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. And the reason for that short duration is that there is a point of diminishing returns. Because we have to be super focused mentally as we're doing all of this, we can probably get a good solid 10 to 15 minutes. After that, we're gonna to start to see our focus wane and as a result, the reps that we're gonna be practicing could or could not be valuable. One of the other things that I talk about is have a plan. What do I want to practice? What am I going to work on? What is my goal for this session? If you can sit down and quickly identify what do you wanna work on? What is it? Is it going to be gun manipulations? Is it going to be working your trigger manipulation? Is it going to be just kind of working with your sights or possibly even applying some follow through fundamentals? Have a plan. Literally, like write it out. I'm going to perform 15 reps. I'm going to perform 20 reps. I'm going to perform 10 reps of this, that, or the other. And then lastly is your cleanup. When it's time to clean up from your dry fire practice, it's important that you remove all of your training aids. In particular, whatever your target or your aiming device was that you're using, make sure you remove that from observation or visual view. The reason for that is what I don't want to have happen is you be walking by, not thinking, see that dry fire tool laying out and actually draw a live firearm, aim at that tool and fire a shot. So when it's time to stop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up and we're going to literally make a division. In other words, once I make the choice to stop my dry fire practice, I do not practice anymore. I'm not gonna to try to get one more rep in. I'm not gonna to try to get an extra draw in. I am done. And at that point, I need to move back into my live fire mode. 
if I'm going to be carrying a firearm for self-defense, and that firearm was the same firearm that I practiced with, we do not want those two different divisions to merge or to overlap. So we make a distinction between when dry fire ends and I do not practice anymore, and then when I go ahead and load my firearm for self-defense and carry it with me after that. All right, so these are just some quick tips for you. Those of you that wanna practice dry fire, I really encourage it. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Until then, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. Take care and stay safe.